I'm going to turn, turn it over to Rebecca, who's going to talk to us more about the registration process. Yeah, thanks, Cheryl. So yeah, we're going to actually just jump right into some registration information. So I'm going to be sharing my screen. Um, if you have any issues, just let me know. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and pick that. All right. So we're going to be talking about obviously building your schedule because that's one of the main things that we want you to accomplish by the end of this meeting. And what you'll probably find out is you already have some classes on your schedule or you might have a pretty developed schedule already, but this will just give you more information to be helpful. So some of the agenda items that we're going to cover today are just requirements and enrolling into your major or interest coursework. Uh, we're also going to talk about inter-university transfer and exploratory studies. We'll talk briefly about some pre-enrollment into classes because I would assume at this point you do have some things on your schedule. We're gonna have a little time to do a scavenger hunt to make sure that you're kind of exploring some different options and looking at the first semester all the way through your fourth or fourth year or the full program, depending on what major you're at. And then we're gonna have time to talk at the end about resources and scholarship information. So, Looking at first semester guidelines, some of the things you're going to really want to make sure of is that you're at 12 credits and partly that's because you have to have 12 credits to be a full time student. Um, some of the things that are attached to full time status are housing and financial aid. So if you are living on campus, you definitely want to make sure you have those 12 credits, but also in general, like if you're getting financial aid, whether that's scholarship or just a grant or anything like that it's gonna be tied to what your status is as a student. So typically that's gonna be linked to the 12 credits as well. So for your first semester, kind of the breakdown that we suggest is that you wanna have one to two classes that are your major interest. So that could be whatever is related to what you're thinking about pursuing. If you're an open option major though, I would probably suggest taking a bit more general education or elective courses, which are the two just below that. Um, and those two areas, general education and electives, they typically help you balance out your schedule so that you make it to 12 credits. Because ideally, you don't wanna be taking your entire 12 credits in your major. Like that might be something that you do junior and senior year, but your first semester, you're kind of getting a balance of everything at the university. So I actually pulled my schedule from my first semester of college. I was a math major. So I took calculus one, which was five credits. That took up more than a third of my schedule. And that was something that I went to every single day. Um, my general education course that I took was college writing. So that was also a pretty large chunk of my schedule being four credits. And then the third class I took was an intro bio with lab course. And that was also four credits. So even though I was a high school student that took seven to eight classes every single day, once I got into college, I only took three classes for the first semester. And that's partly just because I wanted to make sure that I started off on the right foot. I got a really strong GPA my first semester because I wanted to apply to different scholarship programs for my second year. Um, but also it's just, I was just a student who I did pretty well in high school and I wanted to be realistic with just the challenges that would come along with starting a new period in my life and being a college student. So 13 credits was definitely enough for me. Um, and I think you'll probably hear that from some of the other students that are gonna be talking for McNeil. So if we're looking at exploratory studies and inter-university transfer, there are five main colleges on our campus that you can move into, especially if you're thinking open option and your exploratory studies right now. So the College of Engineering, College of Business, College of Media Com Communication and Information, they sometimes call it CMCI. So if you hear that term, that's what it's linked to. Um, the College of Arts and Sciences, which houses a ton of majors, and then the College of Music. The other two programs that I put on here is the School of Education. So if you're thinking about getting involved with teaching or you wanna get a minor within the School of Ed, um, they do have a lot of different programs. And then the last program is the program in environmental design. So that's also something um, that you can pursue. All of these programs that are listed do have application requirements and different deadlines. So you wanna make sure you're staying on top of it and talking with your advisor so that you're not missing out on anything if you are pursuing one of these different programs. All right, so pre-enrollment in the classes, more than likely you are enrolled into some classes that the university has chosen. So it should be based on your major or what you've indicated your interest might be. It could be general education classes, um, but there should already be one to two courses on your schedule. 
you're going to have time to talk individually with one of us at the end of this session to find out, like, does this still fit with what you're interested in doing? Um, and we're more than happy to help when it comes to pre-enrollment for what the university's already chosen. The next thing is the McNeil program courses. So ideally, you're going to be getting enrolled into one McNeil course, possibly two, depending on what you're interested in pursuing. And again, it's going to be based on what you've told us is your major or your interest. Um, if you're still undecided and you haven't really made a decision which way to go, we can actually put you into general education coursework as well, potentially a writing class, um, so that you are fulfilling some of your graduation requirements. So I'm going to talk pretty briefly about McNeil classes, and then I'm actually going to turn it over to the students that are on our panel. Um, what are McNeil classes? So they are classes that are controlled by our department, Staffy or the Student Academic Success Center, and they're classes that count towards all different types of degree programs. Um, so it could be anything from math to writing to science to economics. We have a lot of different things to offer. So what might you be enrolled in? It's going to be strictly based on what you're interested in. From the faculty perspective, when it comes to that last question, what makes a McNeil class a McNeil class? Um, I've taught for the math department. And I've taught for McNeil. When I was teaching in the math department, I had a section of 40 students and I had multiple sections of that. So I didn't really get to know my students very well. I definitely had fun teaching, but it was just in a different environment where I felt like I didn't have as much freedom to actually change the way that I was teaching or make it more engaging because I just had so many people to take care of. And when it comes to McNeil, like I have at most 20 students, I really get to know you, I get to know what motivates you, like what are you interested in doing and pursuing. Um, it's just totally different experience um, on the faculty side. So I'm actually going to stop sharing my screen and turn it over to the students. So hopefully you can see them and they can give you some information about why or what they think about when it comes to the McNeil classes. All right. Cool. So hi, everyone. My name is Brian. I'm going to be one of the students that talk about the McNeil classes. So of my four ex almost five years experience um, at CU and in the McNeil program. Um, so in the classes, like Rebecca said, they're pretty small. And typically, like if you're on main campus, that's what we like to call it. Um, professors typically teach like around four sections. And each of those sections are have around 50 students. So typically, um, the students, or sorry, the professor won't really know who you are. Mainly like they don't know like why you're struggling. They'll just, they just rely on you coming to office hours and all that stuff. But with McNeil, you have around like five, 25 students in class and the professor like actually knows you guys. Like Rebecca will probably know you, will probably have put more effort into like helping you in office hours and will probably even help you in the classroom. Um, so another thing I wanna say is like, when you're in like the bigger lecture halls, you're really not gonna be like having that one-on-one -on -one conversation with like students. Um, students would typically just go to class and then just go back, but with McNeil classes, we really focusing on, on engaging you guys to making sure that you guys learn, make sure you understand the material, and to just really get you ready for like main campus classes, and also just like to help you um, find like adjust to college correctly. That's all I have to say. Thanks, Brian. Um, I'm actually going to turn it over to Shane, who's going to lead us through an activity. It should be showing up in the chat as well. Hi, everybody. I'm Shane. I'm the um, writing pro. Uh, I'm sorry, the Community Social Science Coordinator. Um, so what we're going to do next is we're going to do one sec, do a scavenger hunt. And um, what this is designed to do is to give you an idea of maybe why you've been putting in certain classes um what maybe your plan um moving forward is in the next four years it's really just to sort of give you some context and, and things uh some context about your classes about your plan and to um give you a few tools to work with when we go in and start registering for courses so the first step to this is if you look in the chat there are a bunch of document a bunch of um uh, google docs Find the one that best suits you. So there are, there's one that's social science and humanities. So social sciences and humanities, that's like psychology, sociology, political science, all those. Um, there's one for science majors. There's one for undecided. And then there's the ones for uh, the transfers um, that Rebecca was talking about. So those would be uh, engineering, business, um, CMCI, and computer science. So just pick the one that, that 
suits you the best. And then at the bottom of your screen, there's something that says reactions. Give me a thumbs up when you've got the document and you can see it. All right, it looks like pretty close to everyone. All right, so those all those are made in the chat, so you can grab them as you need to. If you need some help at any time during this presentation um, today, please do please do um, shoot a shoot a uh, the, put your question in the chat, and somebody will get to you. I promise. Um, okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to break out into um, small uh, breakout rooms with a couple of people, and. What you're going to do is on that document, there's a set of questions to answer. So you want to, I'm going to give you, there's a link also. So you want to link to that page and then you want to try to answer those questions. So I'm going to walk you through how to use the pages in a sec. Um, so, um, so that's what we're going to do. Um, as far as the rules, there are no rules. You can do whatever. You can tweet it out. You can ask the person in, in the room with you, the staff member, you can um, sometimes a little uh, chat box will pop up with us with an advisor. You can ask the advisor whatever you want to do. It's fine. Okay. And you can ask each other, of course, you, you can help each other out. Okay. So let me walk you through how this works and then we'll, we'll shoot our, we'll, we'll shoot off into um, our breakout rooms. Okay. So for those of you who are, who already sort of know what your major is, this is the screen it's going to take you to. This is the university catalog. So how you use this is um, you click on this search degrees and certificates and then you pick the major that you're interested in. So I wanna be a biochemistry major, okay? So you click on that and then you'll get an overview that tells you like what the major does and all that kind of great stuff. Sometimes they tell you like what jobs you can get and cool, cool things like that. Um, but the next one is really important and that's the requirements. So you can answer questions about this. Um, so what kind of classes do you have to take in the major, outside of the major, all that kind of stuff will be here. And then there's this thing that says plan of study. Uh -huh. And what they do is they give you a sketch four year plan of how to accomplish this major. Okay, so hint, hint that's also on the sheet, all right? So that's how you do, th this is how you do um, stuff that takes you to the catalog. For those of you who are looking to transfer to other schools, um, so you're doing engineering business, um, CMCI, something like that, the link will take you to a page that describes what you have to do in order to get to transfer into that school. So this is all the stuff you need to do to get into engineering. So the questions will ask you um, stuff based on this. So it'll tell you like the required courses that you have to take, um, any if there's any additional requirements, so on and so forth, advising, all that great stuff. Okay, so you'll get one or the one or the other. It's up to um, it depends on what you chose, and then you just and you just use those sheets. Okay, so remember again, there's no rules. So you can ask as many questions as possible, and Sophie will start sending us off into our uh, breakout rooms, and we'll get to we'll get to working. So hopefully um, the scavenger hunt gave you some kind of context about what it is that the classes that you may have or may need to take, um, why you're in those courses and maybe what to think about going forward, okay? So the next thing we're gonna do is we're actually gonna look at your schedule and maybe add a couple of classes to your shopping cart um, so that you're ready to register for next week. So before we go and do all that, I want to take you through um, a couple of things that you need to know for 2020. And then I'm going to walk you through how to use the system to look for classes and register for classes and things like that. Okay. So I'm going to start with um, the welcome to 2020. Um, welcome to 2020 stuff that you need to know about courses at CU. So, so here's a bunch of terms that I just want to explain. If you look in the chat, there is a cheat sheet that has all of these terms defined, so you don't have to remember. <laughs> um, and it also will tell you how to set the filters and things like that we're, that we're about to talk about. So grab that cheat sheet, and then I'm going to walk you through these terms just so that you're aware of what they mean when you're looking for classes, okay? So um, this, is, this is the vocabulary of, of coursework right now. <laughs> um, so it's, it's a bunch of stuff to understand. So I just wanna go through it with you once and then if you have it again on that cheat sheet. 
So the first thing you might see in a course description is they might say that it's asynchronous. And what that means is that the course is online, but you do it at your own pace. It means you don't have to show up at a certain time or do a certain anything, you just do it at your own pace, okay? Another term you might say, see is synchronous. And what synchronous means is that it's online, but you have to show up to class at a certain time online. So like we're doing now, right? It's, it's, a, particular, it's a particular time block, okay? So that's synchronous. So it's an online class, but you have to show up at that particular time, okay? So to make it more confusing, <laughs> you'll see these terms also. Um, online, if you see a course that says that it's just online, what they mean to say is that it's asynchronous, right? It's the same thing. And that means that if it says online, it means you, you, sh you do it at your own pace, you show up whenever, there's no, there's no time you need to be actually in front of the computer, okay? If it says remote, it means that it's synchronous. And that means that it has a certain time that you need to be there online to watch a lecture or participate in class. Okay, so um, just to make this even more complicated, most classes are these, these next three categories and they're called the hybrid classes. So you'll see one that's hybrid remote online. And what that means is that um, part of the class you have to show up for at a certain time and part of the class you do at your own pace and it's all done online, okay? The next one is hybrid in-person remote. And what that means is that it has a part of the class is in-person where you actually go physically to class, you put your mask on, you do the whole nine yards, right? And then part of the, but another part of the class is remote, which means that it's, it's uh, synchronous and you have, to, um, you have to show up online at a specific time. And then there's even some that are hybrid in-person and online. And these are the ones that you have to show up to class at a certain time physically. And then there's other stuff parts of the class that you have to do at your own pace, okay? So I know that's a lot, but that's, that's the basic definition. Okay, so the one to watch out for that we've learned is the in-person class, okay? So CU's trying to give everybody's, um, every, everybody at least one in-person class. But if you have two in-person classes, these are the ones you have to show up for physically, um, we've been we've been told maybe three um, might be too many. So be careful. Be careful. Um, if you see a class that you really like and it's in person, um, you might want to talk to your main campus advisor about taking that course. Okay. So if you already have two, if you have just one, it's probably okay. But it's worth it's worth contacting your main campus advisor about these. Okay. So when you're browsing through the catalog, it'll list these, and I'll show you where it says those things. And once again, you don't have to remember all of this. <laughs> you just have to, um, you just have to um, look at the, um, at the cheat sheet. Okay, so next I wanna walk you through um, how it is that you search for classes, register for classes, all that kind of great stuff, all right. So um, the place to start, uh, the place to start is in your buff portal. We have heard the buff portal is a little wonky today. Um, so um, let's hope it's all working for everybody. Mine errored once when I tried to get in and then, if I, then I tried it again and it let me in. So when you go to your buff portal, you'll see over here, there's this thing that says classes and registration. There's a, there's a checklist of things you need to do and all that great stuff. But what we're looking for is this, it's search for classes. So you just click on search for classes and it takes you to this, this, which has, this is the search engine for all the classes at CU, okay? So um, before we get started with um, searching, there are a bunch of filters that you kind of want to preset. These are also in the cheat sheet. So the first one you have to, you want to set is this any campus. You want to set this to Boulder main campus. And why that is, is there are certain classes that are online that are run by continuing education those cost more money than main campus classes and you don't want to take those, right? <laughs> you just don't, you don't want to take those unless you want to spend, spend extra money. So you want to take Boulder, you want to set it at Boulder main campus. The next thing you want to do is there's this any career and course level. Since you're incoming freshman, you probably want all your courses to be lower division and that's one in 2000 level courses. Um, three and 4,000 level courses typically are for juniors and seniors, maybe sophomores, and they have a lot of prerequisites and they kind of count on you being at the university for a while. So you want to set this to lower division, 
That makes it way easier, okay? Um, the next thing you can do is you can click this little thing that says avoid schedule conflicts. And that means that anything, whatever's in your cart, whatever classes you already registered for, it'll get rid of any of the classes that conflict with that. So, you, so when you search, you'll just, you'll find everything that, that fits your schedule. And that last one is this one, which says open waitlisted or closed. Um, it's better just to set this to open or waitlist available because closed classes, why do you want to see that? You don't, you know, those means you can't get into them anyway. So open means that you can get in, waitlist means that, that you can, you'll be put on a waitlist and if a certain amount of students drop that class, then you'll, you'll, be, you'll get in, okay? So those filters are the ones to set, they're, they're also in the cheat sheet. Okay, so how you search for classes is this. So if you know what class you want, you can search, you can search for it by the class code or if you know what family of classes you want, you can search by the class code. So say, for example, I'm interested in taking a sociology course. I can go S-O-C-Y. And then if I hit this, I will see all the sociology courses um, I can take, okay? So that's, that's the way to search for a specific course. If I wanted to know, if I wanted a specific course like 1001, I can just put that in there and it'll give me this, this deal, okay? Um, so that's the first way to search. The second way to search is probably where most people are. And that is if you have a schedule that's full, um, often what you need to do is you need to find a gen ed class to fill the space there, right? To fill it up that counts towards graduation. So there's this filter down here that says any gen ed courses, any gen ed attributes. And you can search here for, it'll, for um, a family of courses that will fulfill a graduation requirement within those disciplines. So if you're a social science person, I recommend looking at, I like uh, looking at arts and humanities or um, the um, diversity courses because social science, um, you're gonna fulfill all those requirements in your major. If you're undecided, you can pick whatever. <laughs> That's, that's, um, that's where, I, but I would, <clears throat> but I would stay away from um, math because math will probably be chosen for you <clears throat> and so on and so forth. Um, if you are, if you are transferring to another college, you'll probably like engineering or business or CMCI or something like that. Arts and humanities is a great place to start. Social sciences is also a great place to start. Both of those things will help you out in the transfer process. So those are pretty cool. Um, I would, if you're, if you're in, in um, if you're in science, science, like uh, iFi or something like that, arts and humanities and social sciences are also where you want to look because um, you'll get math and, and natural science. Oh, and of course the diversity um, category, okay? So when you click these, you'll get every course on campus that fulfills that requirement and under these scenarios. So this is for arts and humanities. And what you do if you're if you're searching here is you just look look for a class that you think is pretty cool that seems seems uh, pretty interesting to you. So, um, gender and sexuality in ancient Greece. This sounds pretty cool. All right. So I'm like, oh, I don't I think I'll take this. So it does fill a requirement for graduation, all that great stuff. So the next thing you do is you look here and you'll see the class, the class number, the section, and all that great stuff. And you want to look for the this little symbol. There's two. There's one that'll say lecture, L-E-C, and some have a recitation, R-E-C. I'll show you what that looks like in a sec. If it has an R-E-C, it means you need both a lecture and a recitation. If it if it just has lecture like this, you just need it. Okay. This will tell you also how it's being taught. This one's being taught in person. So this is one of those in-person classes that you'd actually have to show up to. Okay, so it'll tell you that an instruction method. So you can add this to your cart. And then it'll ask you a simple, if you like this class, it'll ask you a simple thing. What kind of grades do you want? You want a letter grade? And then um, add to waitlist if the class is full. Yeah, I want to be put on the waitlist. Hey, Shane. Yeah. This one also has a class note. You want to talk about that? Because I think it's only restricted to a wrap. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a good. <laughs> Did it have a wrap? Oh, boy. So, so, yeah. <laughs> Another thing to look for is, is this that Sherelle just pointed out is to read the class notes because sometimes it'll be available only to certain majors or it has a prerequisite or something like that. So in this case, I was wrong. I couldn't have this class. It's, it's part of a, it's part of a wrap. So let me show you one that I know um, has all the, has all the stuff and works. So 
I'm going to go to social sciences and I'm going to look at, wow, look at all these economics. Um, I'm going to look at sociology. So I'm going to, so say I need a social science for credit and I want to take introduction to sociology. Sociology sounds interesting. So if you look at this one, it'll tell you, um, it'll tell you by the time that you pick what kind of instruction you're going to get, right? So there, this one's remote. That means that you have to meet at a certain time, but it's online. And then um, I look at this, the, the, the notes. There doesn't seem to be any notes. Looks like everybody can take it. And then this one, since I chose the lecture, I also have to choose a recitation. So you'll see two class times on your schedule. You'll get the lecture time and the recitation time, but they're the same class, okay? They really are the same class. So then I just pick one that I think uh, that would work with my schedule. Um, so this one does, I'll pick that and I'll add it to my cart and this will give me the full nine yards. And then it just asks me if I need to, uh, if I want to be added to the wait list, okay? So I know that's a lot to absorb. <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go into breakout rooms and you can jump right in there and there'll be somebody like, well, there'll be a staff member in the breakout room with you to help you along the way. So ask a billion questions, it's totally cool. And um, hopefully um, you can at least pick one class to fill out your schedule if you need to. And then you'll be ready to go to register next week. Okay. Oh, and I should mention the first thing you should do is check and see what your schedule looks like already. You might have a bunch of glasses. Okay. All right. So Sophie will be sending us out into rooms. Okay, the rooms are all set. So to recap, um, okay, how many credits um, to be a full-time student? What do you need to have, be a full-time student? How many credits do you need? Twelve. Twelve, thank you. And so um, keep that in mind also for financial aid. We talked about that at Summer Launch One. So financial aid is determined on whether you're a full-time student or not. Um, and you have to be enrolled in 12 credits for um, financial aid to, to look at that. Your waitlist courses do not count. Um, and how many McNeil courses are you going to take at minimum in the fall? At least one. Thank you, Alfonso. Um, and how do you know you're in a McNeil class? Is it the 300R or something yeah. like that? I that's guess. right, that's right, that's right. So the section, thanks. The section number is going to start with, it's gonna be in the 300s. It might be 300R, 311. Um, the class might be ARSC 2300. So that's how you're gonna know. So as you're wondering what McNeil class we surprised you with, that's how you're gonna know. So as we're talking about classes, I, wanna, I want you guys to get a sense, um, to hear from our students about what's it like What's a regular day look like? You go to class a couple times a day and then is that it? What do you do with the rest of your time? So I'm gonna ask Tamana to share a little bit about what one day is like for her. Okay, give me one sec, you guys. I'm gonna figure out how to share my screen. Um, can you guys see that? Yes. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay, so, um, so not to scare you guys, but I am a junior, or now I'm a senior actually, wow. So this is my schedule for my junior year last semester. So it is pretty, I would say this is a medium workload. Um, and so I live at home with my family in Castle Rock, so I can't commute. So I do have a place back in Boulder. So my schedule kind of started off on Wednesday by waking up around 6.30, kind of getting ready. And then I left my place at eight o'clock. Um, I'm a biochem major and as you go to more upper division classes, the majority of your classes will actually be on East Campus. Um, and some of you guys might even experience going to East Campus for some of your courses as well. So I had to take two buses to get at East Campus. And then my class for biochemistry started at 8.30 and it ended at 9.20 a.m. And then my next class was a speech class. Um, it was one of the gen eds and it's also a prerequisite for um, the health school that I'm trying to get into. 
And so the bus pretty much was very delayed. That's also something you have to kind of consider if you're traveling from East Campus to Main Campus. Um, buff buses are very slow. So it took pretty much the 20 from 920 to like 10 or 950 to finally get to the Main Campus again. And then I quickly just speed over to get to my class. And then um, from 11 to 11.50, I had my upper division literature course. Um, it was Shakespeare for non-majors. Um, so I took that course. And then finally, I had an hour and I worked on campus. And then in between that time, I also kind of ate my snack or my lunch that I packed for myself for the day. Um, and then at one, from one to five, I had physiology lab. So if you guys are science majors, um, you kind of are going to just expect to be in a lot of labs and just expect them to take up the majority of your day. So this lab from one to five lasted the entire period, like no one ever left early, maybe 10 minutes at most, but it takes up the majority of your time. And then after I went to the rec center um, from five to six and worked out for an hour, and then went back home, finally took the bus. My commute was 15 minutes at most. Um, then I would eat dinner um, from 6.15 to 6.30. Um, I'm, I kind of like got better at eating really fast. I was a really slow eater like prior to college, but then it's just something you get better at, I guess. So I'd eat dinner really fast and then spent the majority of my night um, studying, depending on like what my schedule was like. So. If it was a final or if there was a midterm coming up, I would spend my from like 6.30 to like 12 a.m. studying or at most if it was just an easier work schedule then probably till 11 and then repeat every single day. So yeah, this was my schedule. Questions for Tamana. And obviously it's going to be a bit different since you guys are taking um, lower division courses. Um, but as you do go into higher division courses, they do tend to be a lot more coursework um, and more in depth. So you kind of just have to like spend more time doing the homework, I guess is like the main way to describe it. So it's college. It's fun. I think Brian can maybe add on to that as well. Um, in terms of like how my typical day was or just like, just like yeah. how long the homework assignments get and oh yeah so like I would say like the more hired like the higher division of classes you go it's more it gets into like more project base and like they in some classes you have like maybe like three homework assignments at most and then then most of your work comes from exams and then comes from like quizzes so like it really changes how you really learn and how you study. So comparatively to like high school, you just did homework like every week, but then with college you do like maybe like a quiz every week, but then homework every month and then like an exam every every two every two months. So it really depends, but it's also like it gets harder. So I had no idea. That was four classes in one day, including a lab. And I didn't know that um, you even had classes on the East Campus, but you took the bus. And is there a fee for the bus? So uh, um, with your student fee, you guys get a free bus, pa free bus pass. Um, so the buff, um, buff buses are like no cards. You don't need to scan anything, but for like the hops, um, I don't know what other buses, RTDs, um, those you actually have to use your buff pa your bus passes um, to actually access that, but they're simply and pretty easy to use if anything. So, so if you're commuting, you can also use a free bus pass. Okay, thank you so much, Brian and Tamana. We're going to be here if you all have any other questions. Um, okay, so let's see. I'm going to share my screen with you. Okay, so you're going to register in the next two weeks, and here are some resources. If you've been in touch with your academic advisor, or even if you haven't, make an appointment with your advisor. They can help walk you through it and give you a perspective on your schedule. 
we're going to be here. The McNeil program is going to be here. So on the two days when you register, we will be available first thing in the morning. Um, and you can stop in. We're going to use the same address. You can stop in and we can answer any questions. And then email us. Um, and then we're going to be monitoring that so we can get right back to you. So if you have any questions prior to registration, during registration, reach out to us. We're also going to be looking at schedules. And if we see that there's something that doesn't make sense or it's not going to set you up for a successful semester, we'll probably reach out. So watch your email. We will be communicating more and more um, via your CU account, your email account. Our pair mentors are here too. So depending on your question, they may be getting back to you and we can call you back if you leave a phone number. So watch for an email from us. We're gonna, um, we will be emailing more details about the, when we're gonna be available during registration. So complete, before you can register, I think a lot of, a lot of you have finished the registration, um, I mean the online experience and you're ready to register. But if you haven't, you must complete the online experience. I think you can access it through the Buff portal and it's probably a, a class on Canvas. Then once you're done, you're gonna select your enrollment window. If you don't have an enrollment window yet, it's probably gonna be um, not the first one, which is okay, because that's Monday, <clears throat> probably one of the last three. And then if you're stuck, if you're in the system and it's not working, um, you wanna call the new student and family programs. Okay, let me get a drink of water. Okay. I wanna mention the scholarship, oops. Oops, again. Okay, I want to mention the scholarship again. So you'll, we have a $50 gift card, gift book scholarship for you to the bookstore through SASE, our department, our home department. If you're admitted to the, from the Office of Admissions into McNeil and you attended both Summer Launch 1 and 2 and you enroll in the McNeil course, we'll have that for you at the end of the summer before classes start. If you all could take a minute to fill out the evaluation. Let me drop that in the chat. Okay, so if you guys could take, um, go to the chat, click on that link and fill out that survey, that'd be great. And I'll give you a couple minutes to fill that out. Okay, if you could finish that up. <clears throat> And we had our contact info on there. Um, so I want to come back. If everybody could turn their screen on, take a look again at each other as much as you can. Just start getting familiar. It's going to be really hard, but hopefully you'll recognize each other in the classes. I'm going to um, say something. I'm going to speak for Julia for a minute. As they're putting you all in classes, she gets to see some of the information you all put in your application. And it's really exciting. <clears throat> to see who you all are and and it's inspirational and it really makes us look forward to what um, the new year is going to look like this new academic year so so we're really excited to see what happens and I appreciate you all being patient and being open to working on this online format so kind of flip around through the gallery look at faces um, let's see is there anything else we need to add we're going to be here for questions so feel free to hang out I'm going to be here um, any questions for the group or faculty, staff, any other comments? Okay, so I'm going to send you all a note about hours for registration. So we'll be here just in case there's a glitch, but you probably only need to register for one or two classes. And you've already received your very first weekly news flash from the McNeil program. I sent that to you yesterday and it includes a survey. We're trying to survey all students in our department to gauge if there are any technological needs um, to support students so that you can have everything you need so that you can um, access courses and um, not, not be missing out on anything. So um, if there's any concerns, please fill out the survey. But regardless, we want to hear from everybody. So you'll click on it. Um, it's called the McNeil News Flash, or it might be from McNeil, and it'll say important survey. So take a look at that. But complete the evaluation. That tells us you are here today, so we can quit bugging you, and we'll know, we'll mark that off that you are here. And we really appreciate the feedback so that we can keep improving this. So thank you. Um, if you don't have any questions, you are free to go.
So thanks. It's great to see you guys. We'll be in touch next week.